Uh, the persistently high official cash rate shows that Labor's legacy will be the mortgage misery they have left so many New Zealanders in. Labor's economic mismanagement has led to the fastest rise in official interest rates in New Zealand's history. Their refusal to rein in their own wasteful spending added fuel to the inflation fire, and now New Zealand mortgage holders are left paying the painful price. Well, I just know that many homeowners will actually be breathing anxious sighs tonight as they worry about how they will cope when they, they refix their loan. Many New Zealand mortgage holders haven't refixed onto higher rates yet, and when they do, it will cost them hundreds of dollars every fortnight. So under Labor, there is no relief, uh, and this is yet another reason why a national-led government needs to be elected to manage the economy better to take pressure down on inflation and interest rates. Well, we are proposing to spend less than Labor is, and we are proposing to swap government spending for tax reduction, which Treasury has concluded is less inflationary. So we stand strongly on a platform of making sure we do more to reduce inflation and interest rates than Labor ever has. Sorry? Well, look, what the Reserve Bank warned today is that Labor's big spending has meant that inflation has got stuck in our economy. The biggest pressure on inflation now is not global factors, it's domestic factors, without non-tradable or domestic inflation remaining really high. So there is that risk in the future, and that's why it's so important that we elect a national-led government that will restore careful economic management, disciplined government spending, and the kind of approaches that bring pressure down on inflation and interest rates. Well, Westpac, New Zealand-based analysts, have concluded that the real risks lie with a Labour to Party Māori Greens coalition. Uh, I think the Goldman Sachs analysis, which I think has been done from people offshore, misses a couple of major factors. First, we're proposing to spend less uh, than the current government is. Second, we are swapping wasteful government spending for tax reduction, uh, which will put less pressure on inflation. And third, our overall fiscal plan uh, will be more contractionary than the current position. Look, I just think the Goldman Sachs analysis is missing some really important factors. National are determined to be responsible economic managers. We, for the past two years, have warned that Labor's big spending ways have been putting fuel on the inflation fire. They had the opportunity to reduce some of their wasteful government spending to take pressure off inflation and interest rates. They chose to do the opposite. In 2022, when inflation was at its peak, government spending went to an all-time high. And our view is that was irresponsible. It's time for a responsible government that knows how to get more value out of every dollar, and that's a national-led government. Exactly how many households will benefit from your $253 a night, well, we advise everyone who wants to see what our tax relief package will deliver them to go to our tax calculator, which will allow them to enter in their household circumstances. How much people will benefit depends on their income, how much they spend on childcare, the age of their children. We know uh, that around 130,000 families will benefit from the family boost policy, with the amount they benefit by varying depending on their income and childcare costs. Around 1.4 million New Zealanders will benefit from our tax reduction. And as I say, we encourage people, go to the website, find out what's in it for you. Any economist will tell you that elevated levels of government spending in recent years have put pressure on inflation and interest rates. And Labor 
should hang their heads in shame because they have done nothing for New Zealand mortgage holders. They have left the Reserve Bank to crank interest rates ever higher because they have refused to pull their own belts in and rein in wasteful spending. National has campaigned consistently on our view that there is a time for discipline ahead of us. And New Zealanders need to decide, do they trust Labour, who consistently outspend their promises, or do they trust National to get more value from government spending? So we stand proudly on our record, and we will be a government that manages the books responsibly and ensures we take decisions that take pressure off inflation and take pressure off interest rates. Well, we want to see it falling, uh, and we will be doing everything that we can to ensure we're managing the books responsibly, as well as taking fiscal policy and economic policy decisions that take pressure off inflation. Well, we actually think that our tax proposals will put downward pressure on rents. The counterfactual is a government that's proposing to put more taxes on landlords and therefore more pressure on rents. Overall, our tax reduction, well, they are proposing to further reduce the interest deductibility available to landlords, which will put even more pressure on rents. Overall, But it will have the effect of increasing the costs for landlords, which we think is very material when it comes to those landlords deciding on the level of rent uh, in the coming months. Overall, our tax plan is fully funded. It does not require government borrowing. It is delivered in the context of a fiscal plan that will see the government spending less next year than Labor is proposing to. Treasury have provided analysis that says that dollar for dollar, a dollar spent on tax reduction is less inflationary than a dollar of government spending. We stand by our tax plan. We can deliver it without driving inflation. Yes, uh, but here's what I would also say. This is a close election. I am worried that some New Zealanders are taking change for granted. I have been um, door knocking and doorstepping people over the past few days, and many people uh, are already congratulating us, and they shouldn't be, because actually every vote will count. And if people do want to see a change of government, they need to give National their party vote, because any other vote risks more uncertainty and more confusion. Oh, look, I think it's clear that the people who are desperate are the Labour Party, whose entire campaign has consisted of negativity, misinformation, baseless attacks. Our statements and our campaign have been based on a positive vision for the future of New Zealand. We have announced dozens of comprehensive policies that are designed to deliver for New Zealanders. We are concerned... What's going on is that Labor have engaged in one of the most negative campaigns I have ever seen. The sight of Chris Hipkins in his hotel room coming on to do yet another negative tirade about National has frankly, uh, I think, been diminishing of the democracy New Zealanders want to see. I think this is an important election. Actually, the future of New Zealand is at stake. Our economy is in extremely poor shape. Crime is out of control, our hospitals are struggling, standards in our schools are lower. National just wants to talk about our policies, our ideas for the future, and that's what we think this campaign should be about. Uh, unfortunately, Labor wants the campaign to be about something a bit different. I think most New Zealanders would share our concern that a large trade union that should be there to represent the concerns of its members on the eve of voting opening was spreading false information. It only withdrew that information once it was highlighted in the media and it took them some time to do it. 
Uh, it's clear to us that they are in cahoots with the Labour Party. And what we would want people focused on in this campaign is what's best for New Zealanders and their futures. That's what National's campaign is focused on. We want to talk about those issues. I want to be in the newspaper and on TV talking about the economy, law and order, education and health. Can I ask another question? Um, the Financial Services Council says there should be a comprehensive review of KiwiSaver. They say it's 16 years old and has never been reviewed properly and it's now worth $100 billion. But for that to happen, it would be nonpartisan and would need support from both major parties. Is that the sort of thing that you would be willing to support? Look, that's not our policy. At this election, we're broadly happy with the KiwiSaver settings and how it's working, so we're not proposing any review of those settings. I will go to bed at night knowing that every year National will increase benefits to ensure they keep up with the cost of living. I will go to bed at night knowing that we will work much harder than the current government has to get people off welfare and into work with the independence and the dignity that it brings. And I'll go to bed at night knowing that ours will be a government committed every day to the economic growth that brings good jobs higher incomes and a lower cost of living for all, including our lowest uh, income New Zealanders. Well, our plan is designed to uh, reduce government spending in our first budget, and that will have an impact of reducing pressure on inflation and interest rates right from that first budget. From the minute we take office, we will be having a focus on what we can do to reduce pressure on inflation and interest rates, consistent with our policy commitments. We're also going to offer New Zealanders relief. From July next year, under National, they will have more cash in their bank accounts as a result of our income tax relief package. We think that's critically important. We also think it's important that we will cancel Labor's plans to add another 12 cents of petrol tax because that is going to hurt a lot of New Zealanders when they fill up at the pump. So we will be standing with New Zealanders to get them through Labor's cost of living crisis and out the other side. Well, look, that's a hypothetical scenario that I don't think will come to pass because we will be working carefully to ensure that our policies take pressure off inflation and interest rates, and we will work alongside our economic advisers to achieve that. I don't think that you're interpreting what they've said today correctly. In Westpac's case, um, they highlighted that the risks sit with a Labour to Party Māori Greens government. And look, a lot of the analysis, a lot of the analysis from both, I've seen your reporting of it, Janae. I'd welcome having the report, but what I did read from what you reported, and I take you to be a factual and true reporter, uh, was that they were sceptical of whether or not we would be able to deliver savings and reprioritisations. We will deliver savings and reprioritisations. We think that New Zealanders doing it tough deserve to know that government departments will be doing their bit to reduce their costs as well, and we will be moving to ensure that they do. Uh, they were also, I think, um, unaware from your reporting, um, but I'd, I'd like to see the full report, that we are proposing less spending, uh, both in our first year of government and over our full term. And I think those are both very relevant factors. Australia under your plan. How significant is that? 
Well, look, our message to every New Zealander um, who is living in Australia is we're hoping to get a national-led government elected. Come on home. It's a great place to be. It'll be even better when national's in charge. Uh, it depends on the context. And also, should Chris Bishop apologise to Mr Hipkins for saying he's a liar when the press backed Hipkins up? Uh, I don't think uh, Chris Bishop has anything to apologise for that I'm aware of. Well, I think that we have to be careful and considerate at each step. We've made clear our commitment to income tax reduction. It's important that we keep the faith with voters on that. I previously said, look, if a natural disaster were to occur, if there was another pandemic, uh, a major seismic event, uh, then yes, the government would have to respond fully, and that could involve borrowing. But this really emphasises why it's so important that the government every year be looking to do what it can to keep the spending position uh, conservative and reasonable, that it not be putting excess pressure on inflation and interest rates, and that we do what we can to get our debt position down. Because we know another rainy day will come, and right now New Zealand's quite exposed because our debt's gone from $5 billion to uh, heading up to $100 billion. Uh, our inflation is high, our interest rates are high, uh, and Labor has left us in this position. It will be the task of an incoming national government to put us in a much stronger economic position, and we are committed to that. When was the national party not respecting the virus? Look, I haven't, I'm not aware of the context of your question. I don't know what you're specifically referring to, but I'm happy to take some more information about it and respond to you uh, in due course. Thank you.